All right, that's good news. Just give me one more moment here. Okay, so I would like to welcome everybody to the first digital toolkit webinar that we're offering uh, through the Office of Online Learning and various other offices. Um, oh boy, on campus. I don't know what just happened. My slideshow, one second. There you go. Um, today's topic will be a new integration that we are currently supporting between the G Suite or Google Suite and E-Class, um, the LMS that we use here at Mount St. Mary College that's based off of Moodle. So we'll jump right into it. Today's presentation should be about maybe 30 to 40 minutes or so in length total, and we'll have plenty of time at the end for any questions uh, or comments you may have at that time. <clears throat> um, just so you know that this webinar is being recorded for future usage, um, we will send you a link to the recording with some resources after the webinar has ended so that it can be viewed in the future. Um, we post them on YouTube, and we also post links on the online learning website uh, for future reference as well. You don't need anything uh, besides just your eyes and your computer for this webinar. Um, there's no microphone needed. And like I mentioned before, at the end, we'll have some time for questions. Um, so if you have any questions, you know, either write them down or hold them till the end, and we'll use the chat feature at that time to um, go over any any thoughts that anyone may have had. So your facilitators today um, are myself, Nick Middlebrook. I am the Instructional Technology Specialist for the Office of Online Learning, and uh, John Atuma, who is the IT Technology Trainer over in the IT department, um, and she works, of course, for the Office of Information Technology. You'll be hearing her voice uh, in a few minutes as uh, she jumps into her piece. And we collaborated on this project together because it sort of involves both sort of, you know, IT and online learning, which work very closely together to, you know, both provide um, the robust technological tools that we have here at the Mount, as well as the, um, you know, Moodle administration that we use for our online classes and hybrid classes. So we'll jump right in. <clears throat> so what are the benefits of utilizing this G Suite, as we call it, integration? Well, uh, the G Suite, or the Google Suite, has a particular part of it called Google Drive, which many of you might have used already. Um, and essentially what that is, it is a, a, is a cloud storage platform where you can both store and pull files off of it. But it's more than just a cloud storage, say, say something like Dropbox would be. Um, it also allows the creation of documents, the conversion of documents, and the sharing of documents um, very easily. It's, it was built in that regard so that um, sharing was sort of the first and foremost aspect of it. And it, in a way, sort of replaces, uh, it doesn't replace, but it comp complements or is a analog to the Microsoft Office suite. Each one has benefits over the other, but if you've used one, you can use the other. And for our intents and purposes um, at the Mount, it serves as a separate repository from which students can store and pull files <clears throat> from their Mount given uh, Google account, not only for their regular courses, but also for the E-Class courses. With this integration, there's no need for a new account. Uh, everyone that either works here or attends this college already has a G Suite account. Um, if you have a at dot my dot msmc edu email address that is your uh, g mail or your g suite account that the mount has provided for you there's no need uh, using this method to save the file to the hard drive before uploading what i mean by that is that previously were i to create a document i would have to both save it somewhere on my computer or my, my tablet and then remember where i saved it be able to locate it again for future uploading or sharing, either through eClass or some other means. Um, in this case, everything is created, everything is stored on this one platform, on the G Suite platform, and this integration ties it directly to the eClass platform. Um, going along that line, 
this also sort of provides a what we call in the IT world a single sign-on, which essentially means that you log in once and you don't have to log in to separate websites again. Um, if you log into the MSMC portal on a regular basis, you, you're already experiencing this. Um, you know, you, you go into the portal, you click on, say, Gmail or eClass or Outlook Mail, and you're already logged in. You don't have to put in a separate set of credentials. So this works on the same line. This is just another set of benefits um, that we have with the way that things are set up here at the Mount. And <clears throat> this is really great for people that use uh, mobile devices, not just smartphones, but also tablets, particularly because those devices aren't the best at being able to locate and find files that have been um, saved because they use very different file structures, um, especially between you know Android and, and iOS devices. Um, they're very different in the way they store things, and it can be very frustrating and confusing for users to find files that were either saved or created on those devices. So if you're using the G Suite to create your files or at least store your files, then on the E-Class side of things, they're as easy to find um, as well. Uh, there was one, one note that is more of a technical note than anything else. Um, any documents that you create in Google Drive, they are created in this sort of proprietary Google format. Um, but when you save them into through this integration into E-Class, and I'll show you an example of this in a few minutes, uh, they will be converted to a standard format. So documents will be continued, converted to the RTF format, uh, which stands for Rich Text Format. It's a very uh, general format that's been around forever. Almost anything can read it. And Google Slides will be converted to the PowerPoint format, and Google Sheets will be converted to the Excel format. So. Anytime anything's being converted, it's being converted into the most common format that any device out there these days can read without any specific or specialized software. And I'm going to pass this over to my colleague in a moment. One moment, sorry. Hey John, I don't know if we can if we can hear you right now. Just see if your mic is working. You might need to click that uh, green mic icon. Right then, that that bar there, yeah. Oh, probably now, right? Okay, sorry. So should I start yeah. over? <laughs> okay. Yeah, go back to the slide right. and start on, please. Okay. So everybody should hear me now. Sorry about that. <laughs> okay, so as Nick said, 
We're here to show you how to integrate various types of Google Documents into eClass. Um, what I will cover um, is I'm going to give you an overview of G, G Suite and Google Drive. And then I'm going to talk to you about the different types of documents that you can create in G Suite. And I'll also uh, show you a few tips on how to create a new document and how to share it properly. Nick will then take over and show you how to easily get to your Google files in eClass. And he will also um, show you some practical examples. OK, so let's talk about G Suite a little bit. All MSMC students and faculty have an MSMC branded Google account, and it's called G Suite. If you have a personal Gmail account, and it, it ends in at gmail.com. So you'll notice that this account looks very familiar, only that the, the Mount St. Mary account ends it at my.msmc.edu. So you'll just notice it's very, very similar. And I just wanted to bring that up because sometimes people are confused on which account they have opened, if they have their personal account open or if they have their Mount account open. So Google put a group of tools together for education, and they called it G Suite. Uh, the idea behind G Suite is to foster better collaboration and communication between faculty and students. So I'm going to show you how to get to it. So to get to G Suite, it's simply logging on to the portal at portal.msmc.edu. And you'll click on the Google icon that's in this blue ribbon. It's close to eClass, so that makes it convenient. There's the eClass link right here, and here's your Google link. So this is the um, single sign-on that uh, Nick mentioned. You just click on it, and you're automatically logged into your Mount account. So by default, your email shows up, but G Suite is much more than just your email. Over here in the right corner, are nine squares. If you click on that, that gets you to all the tools that are available in G Suite. The easiest way to access uh, most of the tools is by using the Google Drive. I'm just going to click on it and open it up. So uh, Google Drive is just a place for you to store your files in the Google Cloud. Uh, once your files, uh, with your files in Drive, um, you and therefore they're in the cloud, you can access your files from any device, anywhere, at any time. So storing your files in this Google Drive is a good thing. And you might want to take advantage of it rather than just always storing your things on uh, your H drive or on your definitely on your computer, on your C drive. Okay, so now that we're in Drive, I just wanted to show you a few things, show you around a little bit. On the top left corner is this new button. So once you're in Drive, you can create new folders, which I have a whole list of them. I love to keep things into folders. Uh, you can also upload files from your desktop. You are able to upload like your Word documents, your Excel documents, or PDFs. So anything that's on your desktop or on your computer, you can upload into Google Drive. You can also create a Google Doc, and this is Google's version of MS of Microsoft Word, which is a word processor. Sheets is just like Excel or similar to Excel. It's a spreadsheet. Slides is your presentation software, otherwise known as PowerPoint in Microsoft. If I click on this Word, um, you can also create a Google Form, which um, is for creating surveys, sign-up forms, or quizzes. Drawings is very similar to MS Paint. And then Google Sites is just an easy way to create simple websites. So if these are all the different types of documents um, that you can create and keep on your drive. I'm going to open up my folder for the day. And I just wanted to show you that this is a whole list of different documents. The W means this is a Word document that I upload it from my desktop or from my computer. Here's a PDF. Uh, this one up here happens to be a, a Google Doc, and this is a, a Google um, Sheet. Uh, I'm sorry, this one down here is a Google Sheet. This is a Google Form. 
Okay, so you, uh, if you want to know what type of file that's out there on your drive, just check out the icons. All right, so let's just create a new document. We'll just do something kind of quick here. So I'm going to go to New, and I'm going to do a Google Doc. Okay, so let's just say OK here. So we'll use the same permissions that are on my folder. Um, and I'll get back to talking about folder permissions uh, in a little while. All right, so here's an empty document. Uh, the toolbar along the top should be pretty user friendly. A lot of the icons will look similar to the ones that you've used in Microsoft Word. Um, if you do hover over any of the icons, uh, it will give you a little description of what, what these um, items all mean. Uh, also, it might not be very obvious, but up here um, along this line, these are all tabs. File is actually a tab, edit, view. So if there's anything else you need, um, just click around and I'm sure you'll find most of what you use uh, currently in Word. You'll find them. You'll find it here by clicking around, so don't be afraid to do that. <laughs> uh, one of the things that's different with uh, Word and uh, Docs is that is there's no save as. So if I type something in here, if you notice, it says saving up on the top, and then all things, all changes have been saved to the drive. So it automatically saves for you. There's no file save or file save as, and that took me a while to get used to. <laughs> I always uh, have that ingrained, is to go to save and save as. So these are, things are actually saved for you automatically. You'll see it say saving, and then it automatically saves it. Uh, because there's no save or save as, another thing that's a little different is you have to name your document. So the way to name it is up here in the top left corner. Right now it's an untitled document. If I click in there, I can just name it. So now my document is saved and it has the name test. I'm actually going to close it to prove to you that it was saved. <laughs> okay, and there it is. So it's now it listed in my folder. Um, let me open that up one more time. So when you do create a document, when you're finally ready to share it with other people, um, you can share it with someone or you can share it with a group of people so that they can either view it, edit it, or add comments. So that's one of the beauties of having these Google um, Docs. So in order to share it with someone, you go to this Share button in the top right corner. Okay, and so currently this file is shared with anyone at Mount St. Mary College can view it. That's, that's what I have uh, right now. Um, if you go down to advanced, this is a way for me to show you all the different options. So advanced. So right here is my current access or permissions and if I change it, I can actually make it public so that anyone can see this in the whole world. Um, I could make it so that anyone in the world can see it if they have the link, if I like email them the link or if I have the link on a website. Uh, the next one down is only people at Mount St. Mary College can find my document um, and look at it. And this one's just a little bit more secure. Anyone at Mount St. Mary College with the link can actually look at it. And that's how I'm going to keep this one. That's a little bit better security. And then um, you can also just uh, have individual people um, assigned uh, to uh, look at the file. So I'm going to go with this item. I think this is the one you'll use the most time. Anyone at Mount St. Mary College with the link. And then down here, there's some more options. Anyone at Mount St. Mary College with the link can either edit it, so therefore multiple people can be editing this document um, pretty much at the same time. Um, people can comment but can't really edit the information but could put little comment bubbles out there or they can just view it. All right, so it's kind of important that you understand what kind of sharing that you want to happen with your document and how you want people to look at it. So I'm just going to keep it as uh, can view. Uh, before I do save, let me just point out that if you are confused about what all these um, 
what all of these permissions mean, just go to this link right here and it explains it to you uh, in layman's term. So I fall back on that quite a few times too. So let me save this. And I'm going to just say, uh, oh, before I say done, um, another option that you do have is you can actually grab the link of this document and put this link, you could just copy it to the desktop or to your uh, clipboard, and then you can send it uh, in an email or you can put it on a website. So I just want you to be aware that this is another way of sharing, is to grabbing, uh, another way to show pe tell people where your document is, is you could just send the link directly to them. So let me do done right here. Okay, and now I'm going to close this document. So I wanted to show you, you can share by using opening the document and using the share button. And there's one other place I want to show you how to share stuff. Here's my folder that's opened. So you can also share uh, this way without actually opening each file. So I want to show you the folder option first. Up here's my folder. I'm going to right click and there's a share button here. Okay, so this one says my folder, and every uh, my folder is um, anyone with a link can view it. Here's the test one that we just created. I'm going to right click on it and share it. And this one also says anyone with a link on it can view it. All right, so when it created it, it created it with the exact same permission as the folder had. And then I have one down here where I actually made it a little bit different. Um, here, let me share that one. And that one says anyone at Mount St. Mary College with the link can actually edit it. So I just wanted to show you that there's different permissions that you can set up for the folder and also for each individual uh, file that's in the folder. Uh, just be aware of these permissions that are on folders and on files and make sure you check it um, before you uh, send it out to someone or before you post it on eClass just so the permissions are correct. Um, it's easy to forget this, and when, uh, especially when you want to share it with other people. Uh, many times people can't open a file that you send to them or they can't edit it and they'll get back to you and the whole reason is because these permissions are set up are not set up properly. Okay, uh, one last thing I'm going to show you and boy I'm blowing through this pretty quickly, <laughs> is I mentioned that you can create a, um, a form. And this is something that's just a little different. And Microsoft Office doesn't have a form. So I have one right here. It's called Survey. I just am throwing this out there as something for you to look at. It's actually a survey form or a sign up form, or it could be even a quiz. And I just wanted to show you what it looks like. People can put short answers here. You can have multiple choice questions and there can be as many of these answers as you want. And then there's also yes, no check boxes. Uh, it's a really nice option if you just want to take a poll on um, students in the class or gather information from them or have a sign up form. It's just a, it's a really simple drag and drop uh, method to create this form. So I just wanted to throw that out there. If anybody needs help with that, you can contact uh, me directly and I can help you, or I'm sure Nick can help you with that also. Um, so I think that's about all I have. Um, so you should know now how to upload your files to G Suite and to, to the G Suite, G Suite Drive. Um, also how to create files and to share them properly. Those are the most important things that I had to show you. And uh, Nick could probably take over now and show you how to get the G Suite files into eClass. So I'm going to send the, it off to Nick. Yep. All right. Thank you. Um, give me my screen back up here. Okay, so like Jonna indicated, um, I'll give you sort of a brief overview as to what it looks like on the eClass side. <clears throat> After you've created or uploaded some documents into the G Suite Drive, how do we get them seamlessly without too much work on our end or headaches on our end into the um, eClass side of things? So I have here um, a test course that I have 
created. Give me one second here. Okay. And um, essentially, it's very simple. Usually, my demonstrations take a while. Um, but this one's about as straightforward as can be, which is why it's such a nice integration that we have. Um, first and foremost, we'll look at it from, say, a teacher's perspective. So say this is your course here, and you're looking to share a resource that you've either created or uploaded to the Google Drive or GC Drive to eClass um, seamlessly. So what you would first do, say we want to share a file. So I'd make sure editing is on in my eClass course, and it is in this case. I click on Add an Activity or Resource. Um, I scroll down to, for this example, File. I click on Add. I give this file a name. I'm just give it a name of Test File for one. And anywhere um, you have this sort of content or uh, pane or this file upload area, uh, you can use this integration. And I'll show you three examples um, today as to what it would look like. So what I'm going to do is, whereas normally I would either drag and drop a file from my, from my folder here, such as, uh, say, something like this here, um, that's the old school way of doing it. If it's something I have stored on my computer, if I want to use an integration, it's actually a little bit nicer. I click on this icon here, the add a file or add a single file icon. It's the one located next to the folder icon here. That will bring up the file picker window that you've seen <clears throat> if you've used eClass before. On your left hand pane here, you're going to have a number of resources. Um, some you may have used before, such as recent files or um, searching for Wikimedia or maybe even recording audio in our built-in audio recorder. This time we're going to click on Google Drive. You'll see a link here to log into your account, which you'll click on. That'll load a pop-up window um, asking you to choose an account to log into. Um, most of the time you'll already be logged into your your G Suite account, but if not, uh, you will click on the name of the account you're looking to log into, or click Use Another Account if it's stored on some other Google account. For this instance, I want to click on my own account here. It'll ask me just one time for permission, um, it's basically saying that msmc.edu wants to view the files in your Google Drive. You have to allow permission before it can work, and you probably have seen this. Um, and other places before. I click Allow. And then a moment later, um, it loads my Google Drive or my G Drive um, account here, seeing all the files I have stored within there. And <clears throat> the nice thing is I have a few different ways of looking at these files. Um, I could look at these files in image view, in a detailed view, about when they're modified, their size, their type, just like you can in either Windows or OS X, and also a uh, collapsible view where I can go down from the root folder down through different um, folders within. And so, <clears throat> say I want to add this um, document, this PDF document I've created about Adobe Connect. I click on the file. I give it a name, but it generally comes across with a name, an author, any rights I have, and I select this file. And then as you can see, it automatically adds it to the content area, meaning it's ready to be uploaded. Um, I could change any other settings I'd want to, as I normally could in eClass. And then when I'm ready to save it, I save and return to, co return to course. And now you can see here on my screen, that my test file has been uploaded with the name I gave it. And if I'm to click on it, it loads in uh, my PDF browser, in my web browser here. Some other places that you could use this integration, um, say for assignments, say I'm coming in as a student this time. So I'll temporarily switch my role to a student. And my, my instructor has asked me to upload you know, a paper for an assignment here. So I go into my assignment as a student. I have my information about the assignment here. As a student, I click Add Submission. And I'm presented again with this file submission 
window that we see you know, all throughout eClass in different areas. Just like I did prior, I click on the Add File button. I click on Google Drive. I don't need to log in again because it already knows who I am and it will remember who you are um, unless you explicitly tell, tell it to log out um, using that button there. So I would find the file I'm looking to upload as a student. Let's say this file here. Take a moment to upload. And I save changes. And voila, now I, as a student, I can see my file submission here. And if I go in as an instructor or a teacher, I can see that um, that there's been a submission here for that particular student. And of course, I could click on that submission to either download, which it's doing right now, or view that submission. And you'll see that it came across, um, as I mentioned before, it came across as an RTF file. Um, so it automatically converted this file that was created in the Google Drive um, or the G Suite Drive uh, proprietary format. It automatically converted it before saving it so that anyone in this course, teacher or student, whoever has to view this file can view it in a format that's open to, is able to be opened on any platform out there from smartphones to tablets to Macs to PCs to Linux machines. Another example of a way I could use this integration is discussion forums. And so I say as an instructor here, I'm going to add a new topic to my discussion forum and say, um, call topic number one, say discuss the short story attached. And so say I have uh, you know, a short story that I've uploaded to my Google Drive or something that I might have written on there. Same thing as before. I go to click on Google Drive. I find a folder I'm looking for. And then I, I select whatever the file I'm looking for I want to um, upload such as this file here, we'll say. And now my form has my initial topic here, the short uh, message I wrote to my students, and then this attached file that I never had to leave eClass to retrieve. I never had to save to a hard drive. I never had to figure out where it was on my tablet. I just two, three clicks and it's right here. Everything is stored now in, in two different places, which is a benefit. It's stored both on eClass, which is backed up regularly. And it's also stored on the Google Cloud, which is you know, very robust and very secure and backed up you know, obviously very regularly as well. Um, the idea here is that anywhere in eClass that you can upload a file, which is most of the activities and the resources um, that are file, folder, um, and I think just file and folder, and many of these resources throughout here, they all have this ability as somehow to upload a file either as part of the initial activity setup or as a student responding to the instructions in the assignment itself. So it's pretty straightforward that it's just there and it, and it just sort of works, which is the best kind of plugin, if you ask me. Uh, one other added benefit we have through this um, integration, which you may have seen before, is the ability to pull things from Picasso, which is owned by Google as well. You'll notice that below the Google Drive link here, I have another link for the Picasso web album here. And it works just the way as before. It's gonna ask me to log into which account I wanna log into. I'll log into my other account for this purposes. I'll give it permission just once. And now any photos I have stored on my Google Picasa account, I will have access to, um, say such as this icon here. And I can just as easily upload 
an image file stored not only on Google Drive, but also stored on Google's um, software, or I'm sorry, image platform, which is called Picasa. So if you use Picasa, or if you have a lot of images that you're looking to share easily with students, Picasa might not be a bad idea, um, because now it's integrated directly into uh, the eClass learning management system platform that we use here at the Mount. So in terms of demonstration, that's about it. It's actually pretty straightforward. Um, there, it's, it's, it's beautiful in its simplicity, and um, it's very streamlined. Um, just a few closing thoughts um, before we open up any, the floor for any questions you might have. As I said, it's a streamlined process. Once you log in once and you give it permission for that account, you never have to log in again. You never have to give it permission again. It will remember what account you want to use. Now, again, you could always remove those permissions if you need to use a separate account for some reason or another. Um, and that's something that you know me or the IT department could, could help you along with. Every user here at the Mount already have a, these accounts. Everyone that here has a G uh, Suite account. Everyone here, BU adjunct, full-time student administrator, has an E-Class account. So again, there's nothing to set up. There's nothing to sign up for. You already have this functionality ready to go whenever you're ready to use it. There's an extra layer of backup security now. So not only are your files now stored on E-Class, but now they're also being stored on the Google Cloud which you know you will have access to um, anywhere in the world um, and you can even you know sync to certain devices be it your laptop or your phone so you always have a one-to-one -one copy of what is on your your google cloud um, again students it's nice for students they can access their files from anywhere you know you don't have to be on e-class to access your files if you're using the google suite but you don't have to have access to you know a web browser to, if or not a web browser but um, your Google Drive, you know, explicitly to be able to pull these files from eClass itself. So they are interconnected the first time you set it up between um, eClass and the account you want to use it with. So that about wraps it up. I said this would be a little bit shorter than our normal webinar, um, just because of its simplicity and, and streamlinedness. Um, so if you're interested in integrating G Suite into your course, into your E-Class course. Um, you know, you can make an appointment with online learning, or if you're just interested in learning more um, about the G Suite itself and how it works and all the sorts of features um, it has, and you know, it's very robust. Um, Jana would be the person you'd want to talk to about that. Um, but the two of us, you know, work closely together to make sure that you know all our bases are co covered when it comes to. Uh, the integration between the IT department here and the online de learning department, um, which I work for. So you can see our contact information up on the screen, screen here, excuse me. And at this time, um, if there is any questions you may have, um, feel free to type them into um, the chat box you see on your window there.